that we call for social and solidarity economies and strengthen people-centered and human rights-based alternative concepts of development which are socially and ecologically sustainable. We need to strengthen our influence on shaping national and international development and humanitarian policies and the global development agenda in this direction. Dear colleagues, as a governing board, at a certain moment we had to ask ourselves, do we become a strong political force to end poverty or are we only numerous diaconical programs loosely connected to one another? While the question might be quite dramatic, that is what we feel is at stake. We drew two consequences. First, consciously we have put ourselves on the path to become the strong political force. In Arusha, with the creation of Act Alliance, we endorsed advocacy as part of the identity of the new alliance. In four years, we have moved from building the foundations of our advocacy work to a reality where we are able to access negotiation processes with evidence from the communities with whom we work. ACT forums increasingly see advocacy as part of their mandate. Globally, the progress made in ensuring the capacity of the entire ACT Alliance in climate justice advocacy and in accessing decision makers in the climate negotiation processes has enabled us to both advocate our case and also enhance the knowledge of who we are with actors who shape policies in the future. We started to sense the difference it makes when we joined hand, join hands and work collaboratively. As a locally well-rooted global alliance, we have an optimal structure to make a difference in the globalized setting if we are able to ensure coherence and connectedness in our actions. Secondly, the first strategic mandate at ACT Alliance enabled the alliance to build its key policies and working structures. It helped the Alliance to consolidate the merger between ACT International and ACT Development. The foundations of the Alliance were built by facilitating the ACT members and forums to endorse joint policies and uh, procedures. Now we are well prepared and it's our time as members to live up to the vision of an Alliance which does not believe in master plans but believes in and wishes to build on the, on the potential, the capacity, the assets and resources of all its members and all regions. The second strategic mandate further builds on what has been achieved and inspires ACT Alliance members with a strong vision for justice. It places the Alliance into a strategic role in realizing the vision of justice through advancing human dignity, strengthening the resilience of communities and by protecting the environment. But this strategic role is mainly to be implemented through member-driven initiatives. Members drive the justice ag agenda by joining hands to be stronger in action. Therefore, the second strategic plan pl uh, places your, places our aspirations and potential as members at the center of the Alliance activities and seeks ways to link them up to each other so that together we can make a difference. To strengthen and support the capacity and the sense of responsibility and of ownership of all the forums to collecti collectively strive for our vision. That's our ambition. Dear friends, since my arrival in Dominican Republic and throughout preparing for this assembly, I have been moved by the hospitality and warmth which, have been which we have been received in this country and from our local hosts. I look forward to a successful and meaningful ACT Alliance in the Dominican context. I would like to take this opportunity to highlight the challenges faced by many citizens of this country, particularly those of Haitian descent whose rights are in jeopardy as a result of recent legislative decisions. I'm encouraged by the human rights driven appro approaches of ACT Alliance members as they engage with vulnerable communities and decision makers uh, alike. The discourse on social belonging, on exclusion and segregation must always seek to protect human dignity for all at all times. This assembly will be an opportunity for us to strengthen and support their work for human rights and for justice and to live up issues of mutual concern. Friends, it give me, gives me a great pleasure to welcome you at this second ACT assembly.
Thank you very much, Cornelia, for reminding us that you know uh, at this uh, at this assembly we are going to put the communities at the center of the work of Act Alliance. You've also reminded us that you know we need to join hands to work together uh, for life within a hostile political context that is constantly changing. You are reminding us that the religious leadership is a game changer in bringing hope to the so many people who are suffering. And you've outlined for us in brief the strategic plan for ACT Alliance. And indeed, it is the hope of this assembly that it will set the agenda of the work of ACT Alliance you know, for the next four years. Now, sisters and brothers, it gives me great joy to welcome our special guest. Our special guest who is representing the President of the Dominican Republic is Reverend Elvis Samuel Medina, who is the director of the relations between churches and the government. So I welcome you, Reverend Medina, to the podium. Muy buenos días y bendiciones para todos y para todas. República Dominicana es un país bendecido. Bendecido porque Dios ha puesto sus ojos sobre él. Y bendecido porque ustedes están presentes. Y quisiéramos de manera eh, respetuosa y genuflésica expresar nuestro cariño y nuestro respeto a todo lo que es Ad Alliance expresarle en nombre del Presidente de la República, que le da la más cordial bienvenida a todo este equipo amplio del mundo entero que se reúne en este lugar para ayudar a combatir la pobreza, la desigualdad y para elevar la dignidad humana a nivel que Dios quiere que se eleve. Expresa el Presidente de la República, como se lo ha expresado a los directivos, que se le agradece el equipo conformado y el trabajo que realiza el Servicio Social de Iglesia Dominicana como representante de Ad Alliance en República Dominicana. En mi nombre particular, en el nombre de la iglesia que represento, y soy miembro también de la Junta del Servicio Social de Iglesia Dominicana, tengo a bien agradecer la presencia de la hermana Cornelia Fox, de Olan Bis, del doctor Dunal y del doctor Lorenzo Mutaquín así como de todos los delegados del mundo. En días pasados, el Presidente de la República recibió en su despacho por un buen tiempo a los representantes que en ese momento estaban presentes de esta institución. Le expresó de manera pública y de manera privada a ellos que agradecía el gran esfuerzo que hacían a nivel global por combatir todos los males sociales que afectan a la humanidad. Expresó a ellos y le manda a expresar a todos los delegados que su ausencia en este lugar es por el cúmulo de compromiso que tiene. Tenía mucho interés, mucho deseo de compartir con ustedes, sin embargo, sus muchos compromisos le impidieron. En el día de ayer me pidieron que asumiera pues su representación ante ustedes. Y él le expresa que él está unido con ustedes, que los ideales del gobierno dominicano y los propósitos del gobierno dominicano son iguales a los que ustedes representan que es un gobierno humano, un gobierno sencillo, un gobierno que trabaja por los pobres, que trabaja para los pobres, que es un hombre que no se luce de grandes envergaduras, que no anda buscando parafernarias, sino que es un hombre que va donde están las gente sencillas. A él ha elaborado un lema, que, un lema que dice que él tiene que ir donde están los pobres, porque los pobres no pueden ir donde está él, los pobres no tienen acceso a la presidencia de la república, no tienen forma de llegar, sin embargo él entonces de manera improvisada se le aparecen sus casas, se le aparecen sus comunidades, se le aparecen sus medios de trabajo y entonces intenta con los medios que tiene hacerlos más productivos, hacerlos más dignos, mejorar las condiciones de vida de ellos y entonces él dice que los propósitos del servicio social de iglesia y de Ad Alliance eh, son los mismos propósitos de su gobierno. 
él le expresa a ustedes que gracias, gracias por escoger República Dominicana, gracias por venir a esta isla del Caribe, una isla hispánica, una isla multicolor, una isla que desde el más árido, desde el más parecido al gringo, al europeo, hasta el más parecido al africano, estamos aquí conviviendo, sin discriminaciones, sin amarguras, sin amarguras históricas. Ha intentado nuestro señor presidente por todos los medios de mejorar toda situación de todo lo que convivimos en esta media isla del Caribe, porque la isla hispánica está compuesta por dos naciones completamente distintas. Una es la nación de Haití, que es francés, que tiene cultura religiosamente distinta, que tiene niveles sociales completamente distintos, y la parte de República Dominicana, que es la otra parte de la isla. Sin embargo, desde República Dominicana, lo que se intenta es bendecir a toda la isla y trabajar con menos discriminación, con menos forma de, con menos forma de, de maltratar al ser humano, no importando su condición social, su condición racial. En nombre del de Presidente de la República, en nombre de la Presidencia, le damos la bienvenida y esperamos que los frutos puedan ser para todos y que República Dominicana pueda seguir siendo beneficiada de todos los frutos de esta noble, noble y gran asamblea. Bendiciones y paz para todos. The sentence that has touched me the most is, uh, is where you said uh, the purpose of ACT Alliance are the same with the purposes of the government of the uh, Dominican Republic, eradicating poverty and working without discrimination. Thank you so much for reminding us about that. And we hope that you know this could be true for all the governments in the world so that indeed we can have a just and peaceful world. I'm now happy to introduce my own general secretary of the World Council of Churches, uh, the Reverend Dr. Olaf uh, Tivert, to speak to us in relation to the ecumenical pilgrimage of justice and peace. Your Excellency, moderator, generous hosts, dear leaders of the ACT Alliance, dear sisters and brothers, I greet you in the name of the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the life giver of all. It is a privilege to come to this place and to this beautiful country. It is an inspiration to participate in this gathering of so many who personally and as representatives of churches and organizations are committed to work today and every day for justice and for peace. And it is an honor for me to represent here the World Council of Churches, a fellowship and a sister to the ACT Alliance, to some extent also representing other family connections to you. We have some responsibility of parenthood as well. But we are gathered here to join hands, to see how we can walk and work together. And you have asked me to reflect how your theme corresponds to the theme of the plans of the World Council of Churches for the next years, a pilgrimage of justice and peace. We are gathered here in this island that, due to its strategic place in this part of the world, more than any other places represents the beginning of colonization of the American continents. 
It became an island and a country where many came, and not all for the sake of justice and peace. But also many, many have come and walked and marched here to express their hope and to seek for a future of justice and peace. Many of you, more than I do, what that era of colonization represents in terms of injustices, conflicts, and even abuse of our Christian faith. However, we are also in this national state of the, Demo the, the Dominican Republic that already many years ago got its liberation from some colonial powers, although you had to struggle again and again to maintain your freedom. We are gathered here in this place of abundance of natural resources, but we are also in a region where the encounters of and the divisions between North and South, which we actually see more and more in every country in the world, but also where we see those who have a lot, some coming as, as, as tourists to this place, and we see the difference, the iniquity between us and the many who have less, or even actually very little. We are gathered here in the year of 2014. 100 years after the outbreak of the first war that had to be called a world war, causing enormous damage in many continents. It led to the end of many empires, but also to a division of many regions that was and is not quite sustainable and still are not platforms for peaceful life together. We also meet 100 years after the installation of Archbishop Nathan Söderblom in Uppsala. And in Sweden, they will celebrate this in two weeks from now. In 1930, in Oslo, Nathan Söderblom got the Nobel Peace Prize for the initiatives to gather the ecumenical movement to gather representatives from the churches in the world to the first assembly of life and work in Stockholm in 1925. And this, dear friends, later developed to become the World Council of Churches, but also ACT Alliance. These realities give us significant perspectives on what we are here to do as we gather in this second assembly of the ACT Alliance, but also as we are gathered in the one ecumenical movement. We are on this way together. We come in peace. We are received in peace. We come as pilgrims of justice and peace. And the many perspectives of how travel and movements can change us and the world for good and for worse, are a significant background for my reflections about what it means to be on this pilgrimage of justice and peace. When the World Council of Churches met for its first assembly in Amsterdam 1948, the same year as the United Nations was established, the assembly said, we are committed to stay together. When the 10th Assembly of the World Council met in Busan in Korea last year, actually exactly a year ago, we said we are committed to move together. These messages are two sides of the same call and the same commitment. We can only move together as churches when we are united in our faith in the God of life who created all to the life in fellowship and who calls the church to be a sign and a foretaste of the unity of life and of humankind. And we are, according to the Holy Bible, and particularly clearly expressed in 
St. Paul's letter to the Romans, failing as human beings and humanity in our basic call to honor God, the giver of life. However, by the grace of God, we are liberated, liberated to join hands, to be able to give glory to God as a just and inclusive fellowship in Christ. In spite of, but also with, all our differences. In Christ there is no condemnation, but a new fellowship of hope for us and for the whole of creation. We make this visible as we respond to our calling to serve one another, to give the days of our lives and our resources as a holy sacrifice for the other, as Christ did, to be transformed and to transform the world. And let me quote from chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, from the letters to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what it is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And therefore also in chapter 15, Paul can say, we are called to receive one another as Christ has received us. We can only stay in this fellowship together if this is an active and proactive life together. If we are willing to go into new landscapes, to go out of the comfort zones of the churches, of our families and friendships, to live in this world as it is and to be with our fellow human beings as they are, as we are, and as they and we struggle for justice and peace but also as we share with them the joy of life together. Therefore, the churches and the one ecumenical movement cannot say that we are going to stay together and that we are going to move together without saying that we are going to act together. Hence, what ACT Alliance represents as initiative and intention, as well as incitement, and as institutionalizing this commitment is an integrated part of this one ecumenical movement. Sisters and brothers, we are moving together. We are moving in faith. We are moving with a purpose and with shared values. So let us use this time and this opportunity granted to us by the God of life to improve the ways in which we can do this. With the wisdom we have to share with one another and with our ears and times we have to listen to one another. This work you are doing, we are doing, as any work we have to undertake together as human beings, be it in the name of the church or not, is not perfect. None of us or our institutions are perfect. But that is also one significant meaning of the image of a pilgrimage. It is a move for people who recognize that we are in need of changes and sometimes even in need of conversion, called to move on or even to change our directions. Nevertheless, in spite of our shortcomings, even with our best intentions, we do want and we do dare to take steps forward together that can by, be identified as contributions to this pilgrimage, this journey in faith together, joining hands together. We do believe that God leads us into life, into the places, even the wrong places, and the realities and the times where we should be 
where we can focus on something else than ourselves and our internal businesses. We need to help one another to be on our move forward together for those who need it the most. And let me share with you a couple of other perspectives that I th find particularly relevant for how we think about what this pilgrimage means today. The biblical word for service to which we are called is diakonia. This word and the language we connect to it is a common basis for what we do as the World Council and as Act Alliance. We had a very fruitful discussion on this theme in the Assembly of the World Council last year, where many of you participated and contributed very well. And this was followed by a consultation including many of those who are here in Malawi last month. The reports and the outcome of these and other moments of deeper reflections on the call to ecumenical and international diakonia, to our service together, shall continue to inspire and enlighten us through this meeting. I'm committed to bring these reflections into our work and decision as a World Council. I find particularly relevant that the service we are called together is a pastoral care which is approaching our task as a community of faith, sharing the values and the potential of our faith in the triune God. This is a holistic approach where we acknowledge all dimensions of our human life as relevant and significant for the church. We are serving as church, as members of the church, we all are called to offer their priestly sacrifice to honor God through the ministry of others. The assets already present in all churches and local Christian communities of communication, of care, creativity and commitments need to be affirmed and strengthened through what we can do in our work together. Furthermore, our service together must be public and prophetic. We need to be willing and to able to analyze, to name and to address what we are convinced is wrong or what is not bringing the values of God, God's kingdom. This does imply that we need to be self-critical as well. This dimension of our ministry requires in a particular way that we are accountable to one another and to God. This call to and this practice of being mutually accountable for what we do, what we have as resources, as communities and countries, is a way forward not backwards. We should be mutually accountable to be on our way, on our pilgrimage forward, into solutions, giving our contributions when and where we have something to give. Being prophetic means that being part of the life that is moving forward into God's future, not dwelling and remaining with the past and the mistakes of the past. And when we in this context shall discuss development it is as a way forward, making changes together that brings hope in terms of justice and peace. And the diakonia we are promoting is honoring, protecting and promoting the rights of every human being. And our service is not limited to the human family in a strict sense. The climate changes we are experiencing and which we slowly, too slowly, are acknowledging as results of human activity are affecting the most vulnerable because they are destructive to the nature of which we all live. Therefore, the Akonia of today requires that we are together with all people of goodwill, but also with a sense of being serving the whole of creation. The day before the summit of global leaders on climate change last month in New York, together we gathered with leaders of faith communities to affirm our common commitment. Christian service is never and can never be an excluding or exclusive solidarity. Our pilgrimage for justice and peace moves as we become part also of the wide people's movement for which we now mobilize in all parts of the world. And our service to the world must be to bring both justice and peace, to focus on how these are interrelated in every challenge we face of today. 
the dramatic deterioration of security in many conflicts of today has a lot to do with ignorance of how to develop a just and sustainable community. We understand also that religion can serve as a source of and a way to fuel conflicts. There is no service to God that can be identified as a holy war. We must continue to build and to focus on the just peace that is needed, even when there are needs of security be, to be addressed. And more than ever, it is time to work with and ally with all those peoples and leaders of faith that are supporting a peaceful coexistence and share our visions for political solutions of conflicts. This service is regardless of faith and must be a sign of our commitment to serve the God of life. And furthermore, the diaconical service we are called to have must be a professional one. We need to use all the qualifications and the competences available. And part of our professionality is to acknowledge and to cooperate with people who have different backgrounds and different roles in their communities. On the other hand, it is also a particular service for the World Council of Churches to offer to increase formation, training and competence. Together we have many commitments to follow up in this sense. We are living as humanity with some times and in some places of the world with a majority of people who are to be labeled as young people. In many countries in the world, they represent definitely people younger than me, younger than most of us. They are particularly in need of respect for their rights, for a safe environment, for education and protection from abuse or violence. Quite often, they represent also the strongest commitment to justice and peace. They are not only the future of the church, they belong to the present life of the church. And the Nobel Peace Prize this year has rightly brought focus on the rights of children, and particularly the rights of girls, through the efforts of remarkable personalities, showing that these are matters of justice and peace, but also of faith. Malala Yousafzai from Pakistan and Kailash Satarti from India have both raised these issues and made them heard. Next month, I'll meet in a meeting called by UNICEF these two laureates as a representative of communities of faith. These and many encounters are moments of encouragement, of challenge, of course, but also of encouragement to see what we can do together. Let me also share with you that joining hands is exactly what this fellowship in the church is meant to be. The concept of pilgrimage is actually to walk together, to be together and to let others be on this way with us. Therefore, we need the attitude of being a servant, but we also need the willingness to grant the freedom to others. We need to be able to liberate others to serve with their gifts, to be free to accept the others that are different from ourselves. That's definitely a quality given by our Lord Jesus Christ. This attitude requires that we are open to one another as different, but also that we are very firm as we do not accept that some are binding us to injustice or to stigmatization to discrimination or to practices that, that are not serving the other or not allowing everybody to serve with their gifts. The truth shall make you free. I read on a flag exposed in the lobby in this hotel as a motto for this nation. The churches still have a lot to do to act together in this respect, to make everybody free to be part of a fellowship and the work where we join hands together. That's why we are here, sisters and brothers. May God bless this nation, and may God bless Act Alliance and our work together.
staying together, moving together, acting together is what we are doing at this assembly of ACT Alliance. Thank you very much. And now um, we are going to watch another message that is coming to us from Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who is an icon of the ecumenical movement. Sisters and brothers, children of God, I extend my warmest greetings to you from Cape Town. I believe in human dignity. All. I believe that this is the vision that God has for everyone in the world, and that religious leaders... Like we have a problem there. Uh, of it's not working now. But whilst we are waiting for them, sisters and brothers, that, children of God, I extend. And I now invite uh, Gillian Martin Mayers, who is our assembly facilitator, to come and uh, explain to us the ACT Assembly how it is organized. Thank you so much. Would you Thank like to come up here? I might because most of my role will be on the floor. If it's okay with you, I'll stay down here. Okay. Is that okay? Right. Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for this opportunity to work with you this week in the role of facilitator. I'm going to be supporting the session chairs and the session speakers here in the plenary sessions, particularly when we get to interactive parts. And almost all the plenary sessions have some interactive part where we'll have the chance to discuss together, to brainstorm, to give ideas. We are 250 people this week who are convened. And we're going to be working together from roughly 9 in the morning to 7 o'clock at night, long days of 10 hours. And in four days, we're going to be doing 40 hours of work individually, but collectively, if you do the math, that's 10,000 hours of collective work we're going to be doing. That's a lot of brainstorming. That's a lot of ideas creation. That's a lot of decision making. And it's just under five years of work, which is quite amazing. So definitely something good is going to come from that. But we're not going to be spending all of our time in this room. We do have 11 sessions here in the plenary, but we also have a number of parallel sessions. As you know, we have three opportunities for the regional groups to be meeting. We've got our join hands workshops on Thursday morning. We've already had our pre-assembly workshops. In the mornings and the evenings, there's opportunities for worship. We have our wonderful interactive space out there where we're going to be having an open house tonight. We have many other things. And you have a lot of things. You have a number of bilaterals that you've planned. There are lots of other meetings and things going on. So we've got a very full couple of days coming up. In a moment, you're going to hear more about the actual work that we're going to be doing together in this next four days. But I wanted to take a moment just to let us all welcome each other because we've come, many of us have come very, very long distances. And so I would like to just recognize the different regions who are here and some of the special groups. And I'd like to ask you to join me to clap for the effort that they've made. And you've all made a great effort to come here and also in advance for the work that we're going to be doing. So I'd like to start first by asking our colleagues from Asia and the Pacific region, can you please stand up and let us welcome you with a round of applause from Asia and the Pacific? Please come. They've come a very long way. Thank you very much and welcome. Can I ask those who've come from the Middle East region to please rise? And we'll welcome you. 
Thank you. I'm spread out. And we have quite a large group coming from Africa. So can our African colleagues stand up, please? And let us. Thank you very much. Welcome. Another very large group is coming from Europe. So if you've flown over from Europe, you've come west, please stand up. Wonderful. And North America now? I would be standing up too for my namesake. Welcome. So our host region is also a very large region. So if you're coming from Latin America and the Caribbean, please rise. <laughs> Wonderful. And I just want to have a call out to those who are here from the Dominican Republic. They might have had a drive to get here, but they've certainly done an awful lot of work and there, there are hosts on the island. So for our Dominican colleagues, can you please stand up? We've got, I know you're here. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks to all of you, and we certainly look forward to working together. As you know, this gathering is a real collective effort, and the teams that have been working for many, many months are really significant. And I wanted to also bring your attention to them. So if you're on the ACT Governing Board and the Executive Committee, can I ask you to please stand up? So I know some of you are on stage. Please stand up and we recognize you. Thank you so much. There's also a group here from the ACT staff. So the staff coming from Geneva and also from New York, could we invite you to stand up? Some of them won't probably be in the room because they're working. Great. Thank you so much. And they're supporting them are a number of volunteers. So if you're one of the volunteers, could you please stand up? We have some volunteers in the room. There are a few. <laughs> a lot of them are actually out in the building preparing for the next sessions. Working with me in the plenary sessions will be five other facilitators. So could I ask the facilitators to please stand up because you'll be seeing them when we get the interactive parts. So these people are working with me a little bit spread out. Thank you in advance. And if you were facilitating or moderating one of the pre-assembly workshops or if you're going to be in one of the join hand sessions or if you're moderating one of the regional meetings, so this is a very large group of people who are helping us put on these events. Could you please stand up if you're helping facilitate and moderate? You can see how many people are involved in making sure that this is a success. Thanks to all of you. So for some of you, as we saw yesterday, this is actually your second assembly. So just to see who knows how things work, if you were in Arusha, could I invite you to stand up so we can see who was at that last assembly? I know there are quite a few people who have been here. Great. And then if you're looking forward to the work that we're going to do together in the next four days, could I ask you to please stand up? A little bit of a trick question, but I'm watching very closely. <laughs> so if you're looking forward to, yeah, thanks to everybody. I'm sure that we're all really looking forward to this. In the next session, we're going to be doing some of the table work that I discussed. And so I just want to give just a very brief moment for you to introduce yourselves at the table, at your tables, if you haven't already done so, so you know who you're going to be talking to in the next session. So just take a couple of moments. Make sure that you all know who you are and then I'll give the floor back to our, our panel. So please just introduce yourselves at your tables.
That sounds like a sign to me. So I think I'll give you another 30 seconds or so if you have any last introductions, and then I'm going to give the floor back to our chair. OK, right. please, okay. Isabel, back to you. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Gillian. I, I now call upon um, Paulina. Uh, the, C the COO of ACT Alliance, you know, to come forward and share with us about the uh, assembly agenda. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. After these wonderful speeches, it feels a bit uh, boring to ask you to turn to your documents, but the moment has come. Um, so please, if I could ask you to, to take three documents, um, which has been um, part of the, the mailing uh, previously. Document one, uh, which is the Act Assembly agenda. Document two, which refers to the organization of the Act Assembly. And document three, the election process going to introduce the first two documents, the Assembly Agenda and the Organization of the Act Assembly. These both are for approval in this session. And my colleague Ru, uh, the Chair of the Membership and Nominations Committee, will be introducing the document three, the election process. So you will see that um, from this opening session, um, the Assembly business program is starting and we are going to use um, today and most of tomorrow for sessions both in plenary and in regional meetings which are really going to kind of inform and advise us and kind of form the basis for our decision making. From Wednesday afternoon onwards um, as the assembly gathers to the assembly committees uh, we are going to move to a decision making mode. So you see from uh, the assembly committees in Wednesday afternoon to through Thursday and Friday that those are labeled as decision-making sessions. If you refer to our statutes, you will find um, a summary of the, the role of the assembly in the life of the governance of this alliance. And you will see that this agenda has been formed to actually address those issues which our statutes stipulate to be the role for the assembly. So at this moment, I'm submitting um, this agenda for your consideration and for your approval. I would like to now turn to the document two, which is the document referring to the organization of the assembly. Before, you, before I um, briefly explain the content of that document, I would like to turn your attention to two issues. First of all, upon arrival, those of you who are um, registered to this assembly as um, delegates, um, from your member organizations, you have received voting cards. So you should have these three laminated cards at your disposal. There's a green card, which is uh, signaling your agreement to the made proposal. There is an orange card, which is referring your abstaining from the decision making. And the third card, which is red, signals that you are not in agreement. So you, wait, you vote either yes, no or you abstain with the orange card. So please use those cards. The second point I wanted to bring to your attention is um, related to the composition of this assembly. At the moment we have um, 89 Act Alliance members registered to the assembly and together 110 delegates coming from these 89 Act Alliance members. We have additional 55 Act Alliance member participants coming in other capacities, either as advisor, group representatives, governing board, Act Forum representatives, etc. We have eight guests and we have seven observers. Altogether, we have 106 organizations present in this assembly. That figure is going to change because we still have 14 member organizations who are registered but have not yet arrived. 
So when the figure changes, we will inform you. I would like to now turn to document two, uh, which is also submitted for your approval, um, which is related to the organization of the Act Assembly. Firstly, it is um, suggested for your affirmation that the Code of Conduct, which we all have mutually endorsed, and which is kind of a backbone of our togetherness, um, is um, expressed as our mutual commitment now as we organize. In your um, information documents, you have found information about the complaints mechanism. There are two complaints focal points. Um, I'm one of them, Umberto Shikia, who is sitting there, um, who could wave his hand, is another complaints focal point. So if there is any complaints, uh, you can refer to us. You will find our contact details uh, in an orange card, which was given to you when you registered. You will also find a complaints box in the business center. It's very visible. So if you want to file a complaint, please, you can use also that method. The governing board is uh, proposing for the assembly five chairs, um, and these chairs um, are Ulla Fixetweit, Isabel Apawo Thierry, Umberto Shikia, Cornelia Fulkrug Weitzel, and Francisco da Assis da Silva, five people to chair the assembly. The government, governing board is also proposing a forming of the assembly steering group, which would be composed of these chairs representative of the local host and the general secretary. I would be supporting the work from the secretariat. It is also suggested that when needed, the proposed chairs and vice chairs of the assembly committees would be joining the work of this steering group. You will see in the document too that there is number of assembly committees suggested and that there is also chairs and vice chairs suggested for these committees. You will notice that um, we are in this document also proposing division of people into regional groupings. Um, the first regional meetings have taken already place and two are still to continue. We would like to propose as, um, into this document an amendment where it sort of says that the regional meetings would be composed of um, representatives from organizations who are coming from whose headquarters are at that region. There are a number of people in this meeting who come with the mandate of an ACT forum, ACT national forum or ACT regional forum, but their organization's headquarters might not be in that region. So our recommendation is that those colleagues would be invited to the regions which they would be um, mandated to reg represent. So let me take an example. Um, representative from Southern Africa Regional Forum comes from an organization whose head headquarters is elsewhere, but he's mandated by the Southern Africa Regional Forum. So therefore, our recommendation is that he would be invited to the Africa Regional Meeting. I would also like to um, make another proposal for amendment. The governing board is proposing that at this moment, two colleagues would be appointed to uh, assist uh, in the election process and particularly in the process of appointment of the new membership and nominations committee. And those colleagues would be Francisco Assis de Silva and Arshinta, two members of the current governing board. So with these comments, I would like to um, introduce the document number two, organization of the assembly, and chair submit the agenda and the organization of the assembly for approval. Thank you very much. I think at this stage, that's where we ask you know, those who have the cards to indicate whether they approve the assembly agenda. And this includes the terms of reference for the assembly steering committee and the assembly committees and appointments of chairs to support the World Council of Churches in the moderation of the assembly including the chairs and vice chairs of the assembly committees, plus the two people that have been nominated to join the election process. Please show your cards. 
Can you switch on the lights so that we are able to see whether they are up? Okay. So green is a sign that you know you agree. Thank you. Right? And then are there any who want to abstain? That's the yellow card. I don't see a yellow card. Is there anybody who wants to say no? That's the red card. Okay, with that then the motion is moved. The agenda, the assembly agenda has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. I now invite uh, Roel Abersberg to come in front and then share with us about the election process. And maybe towards the end, we'll try again to hear the three minute uh, greeting from Archbishop Desmond Tutu if it's ready. <clears throat> Lady Moderator, Your Excellency, esteemed leaders of the ACT Alliance of the World Council of Churches, brothers and sisters, fellow allies, fellow pilgrims, One of the things that we, as the Assembly of the ACT Alliance, are set to do this week is to elect our new leadership for the next four years. The Alliance will elect the members of the governing board and after that also elect the officers, moderator, vice moderator and treasurer. And finally, the Assembly will elect the members for the new membership and nominations committee, MNC for short. And all of this is to be done in accordance with our statutory requirements. Those of us who were at the first assembly of the ACT Alliance four years ago in Arusha will remember that event as an inspiring and uplifting experience, with the exception perhaps of the election of the board members. What came out strongly from the evaluation of our first assembly was that people had felt not taken seriously in that election process. Comments were that most of the delegates did not know most of the people presented for board membership and leave alone that they knew what these people would stand for. In brief, comments were that the election process was not truly transparent, not truly democratic. The board and the membership and nominations committee have taken these criticisms seriously. A year and a half ago, the MNC proposed an entirely new procedure for electing the next governing board, officers and MNC. And the key element in this process was that it should be firmly grounded in the ACT forums, the prime focus of action of the Alliance. This proposal was embraced by the governing board and subsequently sent out to all the members to seek your opinion and support. And you gave that support overwhelmingly. So as a result, we, the Alliance as a whole, have entered into an election process that has taken us a full year to bring to fruition. And in that sense, what we are doing this week is little more than performing the closing act of that worldwide and multi-layered process. It is now time for us to harvest the fruits of what we have done already together as a collective. So what did we do? All the member organizations were invited to put forward candidates. All these candidates were reviewed and scrutinized by the relevant national and or regional ACT forums. All the candidates thus endorsed by their forums were again reviewed by the MNC and checked against the criteria for quality that we seek in board members and MNC members. And they were checked against the proper procedures being carried out. 
All the candidates thus endorsed and screened were presented to all the member organizations together with their bio data and personal letters of motivation. And member organizations worldwide were invited to express any issue or reservation they might have with regard to any of the candidates. We are pleased to report that none of the selected candidates was challenged by any member organization. And perhaps at this point, I might invite you to show your uh, appreciation for all those people who stood forward and wanted to become exposed as candidates and show their willingness to serve the Alliance. Can we give them a hand? Thank you. Um, later today, the regional meetings will affirm the regional representatives they wish to have in the governing board, as well as in a new MNC. Our expectation is that in most cases, consensus will be reached. In some cases, a vote may be required. I want to remind you that there too, only delegates with voting cards will be allowed to cast their votes. At an earlier stage, the World Council of Churches and the Lutheran World Federation have already nominated their respective representatives to the board. On the basis of the outcome of the regional meetings, the outgoing MNC will prepare, um, I'm sorry, the outgoing MNC will present a uh, to you next Thursday a slate for the new governing board of the Act Alliance as well as a slate for the new MNC in accordance with the statutory requirements. We will also present to you a slate for the election of the officers for the new governing board. So what we will then have, the people we will propose will all be known to you by their bio data and personal motivation letters. They will all have the support of their respective national and regional forums, and they will all be meeting the, the criteria for quality that we have set as an alliance, and they are all acceptable as candidates by the full membership. On Thursday afternoon, we will be setting the final step in electing the governing, governing board and the new MNC. The affirmation from the regions will have weighed heavily on the composition of the slate that will be presented to you. Still, it will be up to the discretion of the MNC to compose the ultimate slate that will be put to the vote. After the, gov the governing board elections, we will proceed to elect the three officers, moderator first, then vice moderator, and then treasurer. And finally, a slate will be put to the vote for electing our new MNC. Madam Moderator, I would like uh, to suggest that the procedure for election as has been communicated with the, uh, with the um, Assembly uh, will now be put to the vote for affirmation and acceptance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is the time now we raise our cards to show that uh, you affirm the report as well as the procedure. Okay, the procedure for the election process. Green, again, is for agreement, yellow for abstaining, and red for no. So let's start with green for those who are in agreement. Okay, it's the majority. Uh, any abstention? No yellow. Anybody against? the process of elections. Okay, with that then we declare that the document three has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> we have run over by six minutes into our break time and I, want, uh, I wonder whether I can ask you for three minutes more just to listen to the message from uh, the Bishop, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, if it's ready.
is the message ready? Okay. Can we listen to the speech now? Sisters and brothers, children of God, I extend my warmest greetings to you in Cape Town. Allow the... 